welcome to today's session in today's session we are going to see how to do a curd operation with the help of jsf and ejb so now we are going to create a employee table okay and we are going to display the employee table in a jsf form in the form of a table now here you can see uh, you can insert uh, new records so when you click uh, insert record you will be able to insert new row into the table and automatically uh, the data table also will be updated and you can uh, delete a row uh, from this table or you can also update a row from this table so all these operations we are going to perform with the help of uh, an ejb okay so let's go into the uh, program directly so let me open a new project So let me call the project as EJB002, okay? Now EJB is actually used to write the uh, uh, business logic, okay? So here we are going to uh, insert a row into the table, we are going to delete a row into the table, we are going to update a row into the table, all those things we are going to do uh, without writing the uh, uh, logic directly because all the logics will be already available in the EJB. Just we are going to invoke those methods from our CDIB. Okay, so the project is created here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the uh, databases. Okay. Um, this is my database. So here I'm going to go to Derby database, right click. I'm going to create a new database. So let me create... Uh, the database as EJB. The name of the database is EJB and the username is APP and the password is also APP. Confirm password APP. Okay, so just I'm going to um, uh, create a new database. You can see the new database link will appear here. So once it is appeared, just right click and connect to the database and you can see there is no table inside. Now I'm going to create a table. I'm going to create a table called as employee table. Okay, I'm going to create the first column. First column is EID. Okay, uh, it's integer. There should be one uh, primary key. Uh, then only uh, it can be created as an entity. Okay, so you have uh, your table should have a primary key. Okay, then I'm going to add the next column as employee name. Uh, let me declare it as wear care and the size is 40. The next column I'm going to add is the uh, department name department name again it is where care size 40 the last column i'm going to add is the um, um, uh, okay let me create email or i will add age okay so age as integer okay so we created the table just click ok uh, now let me view the data you can see the table is empty okay Okay, fine. Now let's go to the project. Okay, so this is my project. Now in my project, I'm going to create the entity class for this database. Okay, uh, so right click new, go to other here in persistence. In persistence, you will find entity class from database. So click this option. And then here you have to select the database that you have created inside the database. This is the name of the entity. Select the entity. Click next. And here you have to select a package name. So let me give the package name as entities. Okay. Package name as entities. Click next. Here you have to select list and then click finish. So now the entity is created here. So from the database, we have created the entity. Now for this entity, we have to create the EJB. Okay, so to create the EJB, uh, right click new, just go to other, here you have enterprise Java bean, here you have session bean for entity class. So for the database, we created an entity. Now for the entity, we are going to create the session bean. Okay, so create the session bean, select for this entity only, we are going to create the bean, um, that is EJB. So select this entity and then click next. And you have to give a package where you want to create the EJB. So let me give the package name as model. Okay, you can use any name. Just click on finish. So here you can see the uh, EJB is created. 
uh, now let me show you uh, you can see there are two uh, java files are created one is your ejb name that is employee facade okay so this is the name of your ejb and this is the abstract class okay so uh, let me um, uh, recollect the steps that we have done the first step we've done is we created the table and then the second step is for that table we created an entity okay so now the entity is mapped with the table okay now for this entity we are creating a, a ejb okay enterprise java bean now this is your ejb the name of your ejb is employee facet the abstract class for this one is the abstract facet now if you see in this uh, in this class you can see all the logic for uh, so here you have the logic to create an entity edit an entity remove an entity find an entity find all find range so for everything count an entity for everything you have the logic already okay so you need not waste time in writing the code to do all these operations because it's already existing just you have to invoke wherever it is required okay so this is your ejb now okay fine now uh, where we are going to invoke our ejb we are going to invoke from a cdi bean so we are going to create a cdi bean so let me right click new i'll create a cdi bean suppose if you don't find the option here just go to java server faces you will see cdi bean so here i'm going to create a bean let the bean name be employee controller okay employee controller and the name of the package will be controller okay now here the scope will be session scope understand uh, okay so just we will click on finish you can see uh, the cdi bean is uh, created now inside the cdi bean only you have to invoke your ejb okay to invoke the ejb so now we have to invoke the uh, ejb to invoke the ejb just right click insert code here you have the option option call enterprise bean so this is the project so select here and this is the name of our ejb so select the ejb so the ejb is invoked here now once the ejb is invoked now the next uh, step we are going to do is we are going to create a jsf form and we are going to uh, display the table in the uh, jsf form so you're going to display the full table in the jsf form so if you want to display the full table actually uh, there is a method available in the EJBs. Here you have an option called as find all. See, this find all method will uh, uh, will retrieve all the rows from the table. Okay, and see the return type. The return type is list. So this, uh, if you want to retrieve the full table, okay, if you want to display the full table, because actually we want to do this one. See, you want to display the full table here in the first JSF form. So if you want to display the uh, full table, you have to call the method find all. Okay, so this find all is inside the uh, EJB. Okay, fine. So now we have to call this method to display the full table. So let me call this method inside the CDIB. So inside the CDIB, now I'm going to write another method public. It's going to give me a list, list of uh, list of employee entity. Okay, I'm going to write the method find all. Okay, so I'm not going to write the logic for find all because the method is already there in the uh, EJB. Just I'm going to call the EJB method. So this dot, the name of the EJB is employee facet dot. I'm going to call the method find all. Understand? Okay, so here let me click and add the uh, import for uh, list and uh, click and add the import for employees. Okay, this you have to write return. So it's going to return me the list of all the entities. Okay. So now uh, let's go and code the JSF page. Now let me create a new JSF page. New, I'll create the JSF page. So let me call the page as index. Okay, click on finish. This is your index page. So already we have an HTML page that is not required. So let me delete the HTML page. So this is our uh, JSF page. Now what I want to display in the first JSF page, I want to display the entire um entire table inside right so uh, here if you see you have an option called as palette suppose if you don't find this option here just click on windows uh, ide tools you will see palette just click the palette the palette will appear here so in the palette now, now you need not write any code just drag and drop from the palette automatically the code will be generated now what we want here is we need uh, to display the entity in the form of a data table 
So here you see JSF data table from entity. So just drag and drop this. Okay, so it'll ask you which entity you want to display. So which entity you want to display, you want to display employee. And what is the bean property? Um, I told you have to call the method find all in the um, CDI bean. So this is the name of your CDI bean, employee controller dot. Uh, the name of the method is find all. Just click OK. You can see the code is automatically generated. Okay, so all the uh, columns are displayed here. Okay, so now for the data table, actually there is no border. So just I will add only a border. I will add a border and just save this. Okay, done. Now, before we run uh, and check our code, the first thing we have to do is we have to check the uh, name of the database, uh, the driver name, everything is correct. So just click on um, other sources. Now here you have persistent.xml file. Just open the persistent.xml file and you have to check whether the name of your database is correct. So here your the name of the database is EJB. Yeah, it's correct. Okay. Um, okay, fine. Now just save this. And then let's run the program. Let's run the code. Now, let me select this one and run the code. Now we got the output of this program. So here you can see the uh, table structure available here. You have the employee ID, employee name, department name and age. And here you can see there is no row in the table because we did not insert any row. Now I'm going to create a link to insert the data into this table. So let me go back to the uh, index page now here i'm going to create a link okay so let me create a link to insert the uh, row into the table so let me create a h colon link okay h colon link okay so i'm going to create a link called as insert Okay, and when I click in and click the link, I want to go to the page insert. Okay, so I'm going to create a page called as insert here. Now click on your project, right click new, new, create a JSF page. The JSF page is insert page. Okay, so this is a page I want to display. Now, what I want to display in this insert pages, I want to display a form to enter the value for employee ID, employee name, then uh, department and the age. Okay, so I'm going to display a, a form here. Okay, so. So now when I click insert, I want to add a new entity, right? So let me write the insert method in the CDI bean and then come back to this form. Okay, so let me go to projects. Let me go to the CDI bean. So here I will write the method for insertion. Okay, so public wide insert. Uh, sorry, it should be string. Why? Because after we insert, we want to go back to the index page. Okay, so I'm going to return it to the index page. So public string insert. Now uh, what I want to do for insert is I'm not going to write any logic. The logic is already there in the uh, bin. Okay, so just invoke your uh, EJB dot. There is a create method to insert the new entity. Okay, so here you have to create the uh, employee entity. Okay, so let me create the employee entity. So before I refer the employee entity here, I need to create the employee entity. So let me create the employee entity. Okay, I just created the employee entity. Let me write, uh, create it as private. So I have to insert a get and set method. Okay, now I can refer the employee entity here. Okay, so now I inserted the employee entity. Okay, now this dot employee will be equal to new employee. 
now after I insert I will go back to the index page okay so this is the method for insert just I will save it now I'll go back to the insert page and I will write the form now this is your insert page now insert page what I have to do is I just ask to drag and drop from the palette okay I need not write any code here I just uh, drag and drop see JSF form from entity I need a form because I want to enter the values okay to insert so I need a form here in the previous index page we displayed a table so we dragged and dropped the JSF uh, data table from the entity now here I need a form to enter the input okay so just drag and drop this so here the entity is employee automatically you can see the bean property will be selected now click on OK so here you can see the form is generated see so here in this form uh, so here you can see uh, the form to enter the employee ID uh, and uh, here uh, you can enter your employee name here you can em enter your employee department name and here you can enter your age okay so now what is missing is uh, after you insert the values you have to uh, uh, press a button right you need a command button um, to submit the form so we have to create the command button so let me create the command button here um, after the H panel grid let me create the command button H colon command button okay value of the button is uh, uh, insert okay and what action you want to do is you have to invoke the method in the uh, EJB okay so just call the employee controller dot just you created the method for insert just call this method okay so we created the button right okay now let's uh, run the code you can see the output here itself see uh, just click on this insert you can see the form is created now let me insert the values for employee ID employee name department and age click insert you can see the employee details are inserted into the table right let me insert one more row um, 200 employee name YYY department uh, design okay now you can see the employee inserted okay so insert is working fine now what we have to do is we need to create a link to update and also for the remove so let's uh, create the link for um, update first so here I'm going to add a new column to this existing table I'm going to add a new column the column name will be um, update okay so I'm going to create a new column and then I'm going to add link for every row every row okay so when I click update I should be able to update the value of the entity okay so let's uh, go and code this so let me go back to the index page in the index page I'm going to create a new column so I'll just copy this I'm going to add a new column okay the column name will be uh, just I will create a column name called as action and what is what will be inside the column I'm going to create a link so let me create a link um, I'll create a command link okay value equal to update okay value is equal to update now when I click update I want to go to the update form okay so uh, so I have to create a new form called as update so let me create the new form so let me leave the action field empty here because I'm going to invoke the method. I'm going to write the method in the bean and I will go to call this method. Okay. So later on I will fill this action field. Okay. So now uh, let me go to the project folder, create a new uh, JSF page called as update. Okay. okay so now in the update page
So in the update page, now what you want in the update page is again a form, right? The form should be filled with the uh, values and then you should be able to change the values, right? So here also we need a form. So just I'm going to drag and uh, drop this form in the update file, okay? Click OK. So you can see the form is uh, created. Now I'm going to create a button here. Here also I need a button. So let me create a button H colon command button. Okay, value equal to update. Okay, action equal to what I want to do. Okay, so here again I have to call the bean method. Okay. Okay, so now let's go to the bean and write the method for the update. So I will go to the bean. I'll go to the bean. So here I'm going to write the method for update. String update because after update is over again you have to go back to the index page. Okay, so it has to return the index page. So when you want to update, you need which entity you want to update. Okay, sorry, uh, which entity you want to update. So we have to declare the entity. So this is the entity that you're going to update. You have to pass which entity you want to update. Now this dot employee equal to this E. Return update page. Okay. Now I'll explain you when I run the program, okay? Uh, because in update, actually you need uh, you need to write two methods for update, okay? I will explain you when I show you the output. Two methods are required for update. Okay, one method you will pass the entity as an input for update in other method just you will invoke update as it is okay so here in this case this dot employee facade dot edit i'll explain you return here it will be index okay now one more thing is pending let me save this program now let me go to the uh, index page so in the index page we have not uh, included the action here so in the index page, you have to give the action. So just call the method available in the bean. Employee controller dot call the method update. Okay, just save it. Then in the update page also, you have to in the update page also you have to give the link here so here also i have to call employee controller dot call the method update okay just save this now let's run the code Now let's see the output of the update. Now you can see the table here. Now you can see for each row you have a link called as update. Okay, so when I click update, you can see the value of the current entity is copied into the form. Right? Now if you want to change the age, suppose I want to change the age, change the age and click update, you can see the age is updated here. Right? Okay. So when I click here, you can see the uh, value is uh, copied. 
okay now there are two update buttons so here you can see suppose here i want to change the uh, department to uh, design i change and then i click update again so here you have one update button and when in the form also you have a update button that's why twice we are calling the um, update value now when i call this update what uh, has to happen is the current value of the entity need to be copied into the form okay so let me show you the code for that one um, so let me go to the index see in index you are creating a link for update right okay so when I click this update you are calling the method update and what value you have to pass inside is a current value so what is your current value the current value is whatever you give here okay so for example see item dot e, e id item dot e name so this is the current value of the entity so you have to give the current value here so you need to why we need to update method is first time when you call update you have to call update item because what uh, should happen here is the current uh, value of the entity has to be copied into the form right and then inside the form, inside the update method, see inside the form, you have another update method. So when you call the update method, then you have to invoke the uh, original update method that is available in the EJB. So when you call this update method, let me show you what happens. Just go to the employee controller. See when you call the update method, the uh, entity will be edited. Okay, the entity will be edited, the current entity will be edited and then it returns back to the index page. So when you call the first update method, it goes to the update page. When you call the second update method, it edits the uh, current entity and then it returns back to the index page. Okay, so let me show you the output again. So you can see the output here, see the output here. Suppose I want to update, see there are two update buttons here. So when I click the first update, you can see the current value of the entity is getting copied into the form. Okay, so when I click the first update, just you have to set which is your current entity and the current entity value will be copied into the form. Now here I am going to change the name of the employee. Okay, and when I click update again, so there are two update button. When I click the update, now when I click this update, the edit happens the edit logic is already written in the ejb just you have to call that method just click update you can see the value of the employee is employee name is updated now we are going to add one more column uh, for delete okay so let me add one more column for the delete let me go to the index page in the index page i'm going to add one more column let me copy this as it is okay so here again action but the value will be delete now uh, delete um, you have to ask whether you have to surely delete because delete means the entire entity will be deleted so you have to ask uh, the user uh, for confirmation whether you have to uh, delete before you uh, delete a thing so you need a confirmation box when you click a delete so now what you have to do if you want to delete you have to call the uh, delete method you have to write the delete method in the um, bean okay so let me delete this update method i have to call the delete method here now after this i am i also want to ask for confirmation so on click um, i will ask a confirmation on click return confirm okay so i will ask are you sure to delete yes or no okay fine so just i will ask a confirmation um Okay, fine just i'll ask the confirmation before i uh, click on uh, delete okay now let's write the uh, delete method in the controller i'll go to the uh, controller yeah i'll go to the controller now here i have to write the delete method
okay so delete it should return to the same page okay it should remain in the same page it's not going to another page okay so sorry uh, employee okay you have to pass which entity you're going to delete so this dot employee forget dot there is a method called as remove in ejb to delete the entity okay just remove that entity just save it okay this method you have to invoke in the index page so in the index page you created a link for delete right so you have to invoke this method so employer controller dot you have to call the method delete delete what the current entity so here you have to pass item just save it now let's execute okay so here you have delete so just click delete okay let me check what is the problem actually it should ask the confirmation let me check so now uh, here you can see when i click delete it is asking for the confirmation if i tell yes you can see the entity is getting deleted so i will uh, show you again click delete it's asking for the confirmation if you click ok you can see the entity is getting deleted okay so uh, in this program you saw how to do the curd operation using ejb so we created um, a new entity we um, uh, updated an entity and we also deleted an entity using ejb so here the um, we use the concept of EJB because all the business logic is already available in the EJB. Just you have to call those uh, business methods that is available in the EJB. So hope you understood this session. Uh, thank you for listening.